Welcome to this episode of the SciXNow Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will talk about the electrospray ionization process. Atmospheric pressure ionization is a common term for techniques in which the ionization process starts at atmospheric pressure. The ionization process takes place in the ion source that is between the LC and mass analyzer. You can think of it as a hyphen in LCMS. The most commonly used ionization techniques in combination with a mass spectrometer are the electrospray ionization, also referred to as ESI, and atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, or APCI. Both ESI and APCI can be combined with liquid chromatography and they are classified as soft ionization techniques as they generate intact molecular ions. In this episode, we will have a look into the different steps of the electrospray process with more detail. We will begin by exploring what happens when the liquid from the LC flow exits the electrode and enters the inside of the ion source. As long as no spray voltage is applied, the liquid simply drips. But as soon as the spray voltage is switched on, the liquid at the end of the capillary forms a cone, known as Taylor cone. Small droplets are emitted from the end, causing the liquid to be nebulized into a fine spray. The droplets are charged on their surface due to the spray voltage applied in the specified polarity in this example, the positive ion mode. Their fate is no longer gravity because their trajectory is now guided towards the entrance of the mass spectrometer by the applied electric field. But why are the droplets charged? Because they contain charged matter such as protons or sodium ions, but the analytes and matrix molecules also contribute to this charging of the droplets. As a result, each droplet has multiple charges on its surface which is an important fact for the ESI process, as we will see next. Adding acidic additives, like formic acid, to LC solvents therefore not only improves chromatographic resolution, but also supports the electrospray process in the positive ion mode. Let's examine a single droplet as a representative example. The droplets are now getting smaller due to the evaporation of the liquid. This process is influenced by several factors, including the vacuum gradient, heat, and collision with gas present within the ion source. As a consequence of the evaporation process, the charge density on the surface increases. The charges on the surface are getting so dense that a limit, the Rayleigh limit, is reached. This is when the droplet explodes. Instead of forming equally large droplets, smaller droplets are ejected from the surface during this event. The original charges are also not equally distributed, but the smaller droplets receive much more than the larger droplets that remain behind. This asymmetric process is known as the Coulomb explosion. The illustration is not to scale. In fact, the second generation of droplets from this event have only about 1 to 2% of the mass of the original droplet, but carry about 10 to 20% of the charges. In subsequent events, the smaller droplets continue to shrink and undergo the same process as the larger droplets before. While the bigger droplets stop forming smaller droplets, as soon as they have lost a critical number of charges, they are separated before they reach the entrance of the mass spectrometer and are lost for analysis. What exactly happens next has been the subject of scientific debate for quite some time, and we will not go into the details here. What matters to us is the key outcome of the electrospray process, which is the formation of bare molecular ions. Bare means that these ions ideally do not have any solvent molecules attached to them. Typically, molecules are detected as intact ions, that is the covalent bonds within the molecule remain unfragmented throughout the entire ionization process.
Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to SciX.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the SciX Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.